Thank you for joining me on this second video that we're doing on the Fujifilm 3D W3 camera. Um, I'm encouraged to see that you are still with us, that I haven't lost you in our first video as we look at this little gem. So just to recap, uh, in the first video we had a look at the what. We've had a look at what this camera is, what its specifications are, uh, what its settings are, and uh, what features there are as part of this camera. Uh, we also had a look at the why. Why are we even looking at a 10-year-old camera? And um, with that, with this video, we're moving into the how. We're looking at the how-to. It's, it's kind of a how-to video. Uh, how do we take shots with this camera? How do we process those images? And then ultimately, how do we share those images with others? Um, we have to keep in mind that as we're doing that, that uh, we are looking at uh, old technology, 10-year-old technology, and to get that working now is going to need some hacks. Uh, I'm also going to show you what those hacks are, so hopefully for you it will be a somewhat seamless experience and an enjoyable one. So with that, let's go and take some shots. Okay, enough talking. Let's take some shots with this 3D W3 Fujifilm camera. Uh, so I'll turn it on. That's just done by sliding the front cover down. And uh, the other thing I'll do is I will record the screen so you actually see what I see as well. It's a little bit awkward, but that way you can see at the same time what I'm seeing as well. Okay. So, okay, so this is now in automatic mode. So I'm just going to take a photo like that straight off the bat to show you what it looks like just with auto. Okay, uh, now I'll take another one. I'll do a half press just to wait for that green light to go green, which it has. So it's blinking green. If I now take the photo, I know that both lenses have focused and that way I know that uh, I'm going to get a stereoscopic image with both images focused. Okay, now I'm going to switch it to the advanced 3D mode. And what that allows us to do is to have control over the eye separation. So now it only takes one lens, takes a photo and then repeats it with that same lens uh, and um, makes the second image for the other eye that way. So let's just do that. I will press the trigger. And now I'm just going to step aside a little bit. And you'll see that there's now two images. What I need to do is align them. So what you're doing is manually doing the alignment here for the left and the right eye. And then take another photo. And that allowed me to have control over the separation of left eye and right eye by the amount that I step aside. The other thing we'll do is just we'll switch it into movie mode, into video mode. And I'll also show you what it looks like to do a 3D video. So I'll just step back a little bit for that. And um, we'll start that now. Okay. Here we go. Of course, worth noting is that I see everything in 3D as I look at the screen. But because I'm filming this, obviously with a standard non-3D camera, you are not going to see it in 3D. But trust me, I'll move it sideways a bit. This is 3D and you're seeing that without glasses in 3D. Okay, I'll switch off the camera and uh, we'll have a look at what those images look like. I think I'm in trouble. I broke this prop. It's not mine. It belongs to my wife. A 
I do get asked at times about how images that are taken with this camera are viewed. And uh, that's quite a reasonable question to ask because 2D viewing devices are obviously quite common, but uh, 3D viewing devices are not. So how do you end up viewing the videos and images that you take with this camera? Let's just take a quick look at that. One way, of course, is to look at them on the camera itself. The camera does come with a very good 3D lenticular screen that does not need any glasses to view the content. It does, however, need you to look straight onto the content and it is essentially only a one viewer experience. So you can't really have too many people looking at that screen. People looking at the screen sideways will not see the uh, images necessarily in, in, the, in full 3D. In fact, they may see it in reverse with left eye and right eye reversed. Uh, it, it's not a pleasant way of looking at the screen uh, for others, apart from the one person who is straight on to the display. It is also a small display, obviously, so um, it would be nice to be able to view the content on something larger. So for that, um, uh, 3D TVs uh, are suitable. Uh, you can obviously get 3D TVs at uh, pretty much any size. And uh, with the supported standard of HDMI 1.4, which is the stereoscopic format, uh, which uh, most 3D TVs would support, you can view that content using a 3D TV. Now, generally 3D TVs need glasses. So yes, it is larger, but you would still need glasses to, to view that content. There is a um, proprietary uh, screen that FinePix, that Fujifilm have developed. It's called the FinePix V3 3D. Uh, they've developed that at a similar time to when the camera came out. So there's also now a 10, 10 year old piece of hardware. Uh, but that allows you to view the content without glasses. So similar to the screen that's actually on the camera, this is a lenticular screen that uh, allows you to view the content, as I said, without the use of any head headwear. Um, it is still relatively small, so if you do want to look at it larger than you know your 7.2 7 inch screen, uh, you would uh, still need to go to some form of a 3D TV. The uh, camera uh, outputs uh, three files two for images and one for video. Um, the file for images, uh, the format for that are JPEG, JPEG and uh, MPO. Uh, JPEG files are just the, the native 2D files that any other camera produces as well and allows you to share and distribute the content for viewing on standard 2D devices. Um, so natively, that is the format that you can easily share and, and distribute, but obviously is not 3D. Your MPO file, um, that is the standard, as I've indicated earlier, that came out of uh, Fujifilm for 3D images, um, as well as your AVI files that it produces. And the AVI files is a more proprietary format where two video streams are recorded within the uh, one package in the, in, in the AVI format. The uh, vendor provided software, my FinePix Studio, uh, is, is um, something that you can use to view that content as well as edit that content to some extent. It is no longer supported. Uh, it is still available to download, however, and uh, still therefore uh, you have the ability to use that to edit and view the content from the camera. I will demonstrate that software in a moment, um, but there is also third party software that is available um, that has uh, that is more feature rich that allows you to manipulate both the images uh, and the videos. For the uh, images, there is a uh, piece of software called the Stereo Movie Maker. 
it is free and I'll give you the link of how to download that software so that you can use it. Uh, it allows you to uh, manipulate the AVI files that, uh, that come from the camera and also allow you to view them um, using a Anaglyph format. It also allows you to export in different formats for then viewing in different devices. Uh, that software does need a special codec that is not natively available for Windows 10, which is what I've been using. I will also show you how to get that working uh, in a demonstration that I'll do of that uh, stereo movie maker in a moment. On the image side for the MPO files, there's also a, a piece of software called the Stereo Photo Maker. Um, that is kind of the equivalent of the Stereo Movie Maker. Uh, also a free piece of software that I'll provide the link for and allows you to view and edit the uh, MPO file content. And uh, then allows you to also export in various different formats uh, to, to other devices, including side-by-side -side formats uh, that would be uh, suitable for 3D TVs and other devices. And because MPO files have become the industry standard, there's now also a whole host of other compatible devices and software applications that uh, allow you to view your MPO files um, natively uh, with uh, that device or that software. Okay. Okay, let's talk for a moment on my FinePix Studio. The software that you had provided originally uh, with the purchase of the 3 dw 3 uh, camera. Uh, it is, uh, like I said, a 10 year old camera. The actual software is no longer supported by Fujifilm. Uh, support for my uh, FinePix Studio stopped on the 30th of August in 2019. However, you can still download it and you can still use it. And it is still useful to do some simple uh, editing tasks uh, on your images and videos. So let's fire it up and, and have a look. By the way, when you do install it, be mindful that it does require an older version of .NET, which you'll have to download. It's uh, .NET 3.5 that's required for it. And um, I have done this already here, so I've got it running. Um, I'll start it up, but just so that you're aware it is needed when you, when you install this software. This is the latest software, so there's no point in uh, refreshing or seeing if there's an update, seeing that support has stopped. In fact, if you do try to do that, it will give you an error. It, it won't communicate, it'll give you a communication error. So we'll skip that. I will, as we go through this, only focus on the items that are relevant for 3D and stereoscopic viewing. I'm not going to give a total walkthrough of this uh, FinePix Studio, um, so that uh, I'm just mindful of time. Okay, so I'm not gonna cover importing of images. That's standard functionality that most of these vendor products have. Uh, printing of images, I'm not gonna cover either the My FinePix Net service, which is a sharing uh, hub, uh, doesn't appear to exist anymore, so I'm not gonna cover that either. So the one um, that I am going to cover is, to some extent, is going to be this uh, view images item here. So let's go into that. I'm gonna skip over that. And I've already um, loaded this previously so that you can see the uh, images and videos that we've just taken with the H on that pedestal. Um, on the top, you see the images. On the bottom, you see the videos. And uh, we've taken several images, hence you see a number of those at the top. Uh, you'll also notice that some of those have a 3D box next to them and others don't. The ones that have the 3D box next to them are the MPO files, the stereoscopic files and the ones that don't are just the JPEGs, the ones that you would be able to view with uh, pretty much any application straight in Windows. Okay, um, so 
On the right hand side here you, you see a number of buttons that allow you to do certain functions. Um, of the top three that you see here, uh, they are sharing buttons, so you can share with YouTube or you used to be able to share with YouTube, Facebook and myfindpix.com. Um, I have been unsuccessful to get it to work with YouTube. Uh, it doesn't connect to the server. Um, looking at support, it tells me that uh, I need to upgrade. Of course, this is the latest version, so I think it's just out of support and doesn't work anymore. If, however, there is anyone out there who, who can get this to work, I would be interested, so, so do let me know. Um, Facebook I haven't tried, and like I said, my findpix.com is no longer uh, available, so I haven't tried that either. Okay, the most important buttons from a 3D perspective that we're going to have a look at is going to be the 3D tool palette and the 3D viewer. And I'm going to actually start with the 3D viewer and we're going to have a look at um, the uh, footage that we've taken with the viewer. So I'll start off with just the image and I'll press the 3D viewer and there you go. You see the image as an anaglyph. Uh, in 3D. Uh, if you do just want to see the left eye image, you can pr press the left eye. If you just want to see the right eye image, you can just press the right eye. But of course you want to see it in 3D, don't you? So you're going to have it on 3D. You also have a parallax adjustment and the parallax adjustment allows you to have control over the depth of the image. Okay, so if I press plus, it will actually um, bring the image together um, and if I press the minus it will bring the images apart. However, um, as if you, if you are wearing 3D glasses and are looking at this you'll notice it doesn't really work too well. This, this 3D image has an issue. It, 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 is, it is not all that viewable. And this one was the image, if you recall, that I took with separate images. And you may have noticed that I didn't actually hardware align it too well uh, when I took it. Um, and here in this application, there's no way of doing this alignment in software. So this image is what it is. Uh, it is. It is not well aligned and therefore doesn't produce a very nice 3D stereoscopic uh, image for viewing. Now, not all is lost with that. Uh, I will show you once we get to our third-party software that we are going to be able to fix this. But uh, for now, if you're looking at this, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, work very well. Okay, um, you can swap the left and right image in case you happen to have done the imaging in reverse because, like I said, you have control over your left eye and right eye. You may have done that in the wrong order uh, or in the reverse order and then you can also reverse it here to correct that. And you can also choose whether you want to view it as an anaglyph or uh, a line by line. Uh, I don't have the support on this monitor for line by line, um, so I, I will stick with anaglyph and I suspect that most of you would as well. Okay, so that's viewing an image. Let's do the same thing now with a video. So I'm going to select the video that we've taken earlier. And again, just press the video view, 3D viewer. So here we go. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to mute that because I want to make commentary whilst we're talking on this. Um, so you're now seeing the same thing that you've seen before. You can just swap to the left eye as well, uh, or to the right eye, uh, or the 3D. It seems to stop the video playing when you do that. That's okay. And again, you also have control over your parallax. So you can control whether you wanted to go into the page or further out of the page. Right? Uh, same thing again, you can swap your left and right eye and uh, you can choose between anaglyph and the uh, line by line. So a very simple viewer, uh, works for both video and for images. And um, that is probably if you want to see something a bit larger and you have your 3D glasses, the most convenient way of, of watching. Uh, I, I presume it's going to be unlikely that you would have a um, Fujifilm uh, viewer, a hardware viewer, um, and also to look at it on the screen, although quite nice, and you, you don't get the red and blue color 
discrepancy when, when you have red and blue glasses on is quite small. So uh, this is probably the most convenient way of looking at the footage that you take from your, from your camera. Okay, now let's have a look uh, before we move on to other applications. Uh, the 3D tool template that is provided by MindFix Studio. And um, I'll start with video because that is probably going to be the most useful one uh, for, for this. So you will see uh, that there's a number of tools available and I'll start here with the first one. So 3D movie trimming. Uh, it actually does more than just trimming. It allows you to save your movies in different formats. And that's probably where its value lies. It does do trimming, but once you've trimmed it or not trimmed it at all, it allows you to save it in different formats. So let's just have a look at that because that is going to be quite useful. So you've got your left eye, your right eye. You can swap between them there. It doesn't show you stereoscopically here, uh, but you can trim it. So you can trim something off the end there. You can trim something off that end there on both ends, just, just the parts that you happen to want. Now, I think I just want the beginning, so I'm just going to trim it to the beginning. Make it quite short. Uh, you can uh, step through uh, frame by frame. Um, and it allows you to save back the file in the same format in which we uh, originally took it, which is the AVI format. So I'll just do that to start off with. Uh, we'll save it here in our edits. There you go, it's finished that. So we now have that file uh, in our Fujifilm edits right here and you can play it okay. in, in Windows. Now when you do, um, because it still has the same format that it had straight out of the camera and you will, when you play the film straight out of the camera, the AVI film straight out of the camera on Windows 10, uh, it will open up two windows, right? You can see one window here and it opens up another one because it knows that there's actually two videos embedded in this. It doesn't show it stereoscopically, but it does attempt to open up both of those videos, right? Not necessarily the way that you want to view this. So you obviously are going to have to store this in a different format for, for viewing here on Windows. So let's have a look at another tool then. Um, another tool here is splitting the 3D movies into their individual components. So I've just mentioned that there's these two videos that are embedded in the AVI file. We can, we can actually split those out. So if I now select, and I'll select the edits here. If I, uh, I have selected the video, I'm now going to place it into my edits directory and save it. Okay, if we now look in our edits directory, you'll see that two videos have been created. The original, original one that we created before, but you'll also see a left and a right eye video. So it's now split them into individual files. And now if we open it, it will only open up one of those. So you only have one window that, that is opened. This is, in this case, the left eye. And um, Likewise, you can just open up the right eye video as well. We so go. you have them as separate files now. But again, that's not really the way that you want to view uh, stereoscopically. So to be able to view stereoscopically, um, and as I've mentioned before, the, the easiest way of doing that is to have your red and uh, blue anaglyph glasses, is to select that video go to your 3D tool template and go back to movie trimming. And this time I'm not going to save it as a AVI file. This time I'm going to save it as an anaglyph file. So you can save the file and that way you don't have to have this My Fine Pick Studio to view it. You can send it to anyone who has got uh, red and blue glasses and they would be able to view it stereoscopically. So let's just do that. Let's just save that. And again, we'll go to our uh, desktop, desktop, and put it in our edits. 
and I'm going to call this so that I know what it is, Anaglyph, and we'll save that. Okay, there we go. So it saved the file. If we now go to our edits, you will see uh, that there is this anaglyph um, file that has been created. And if we now double click on that, okay. there we go. You there see go. a file that can be opened up in Windows in anaglyph format, and you can view this in, in 3D. Okay, of course. All right, just getting back to the studio. And um, just going to quickly walk you, I won't demonstrate these ones, but I will walk you through some of the other formats that you can save this in. So we have covered the AVI file, we have covered the anaglyph, um, the side by side for PC. Simply what it does is take the left eye and the right eye and place it side by side and make a video uh, file that is twice as wide in order to accommodate that. And that is actually quite a common format. So quite a number of different applications can, can read that sort of format. Another common format is the side by side for 3D TV. It's the same thing, but it's compressed. It basically on the horizontal axis compresses the image so that the image size still has the same pixels going across in the horizontal directions, but because it now has to squeeze two images into that, those two images are halved in their, in their width. Um, applications basically expand that out again, so you will see it at normal width when you, when you view it, uh, but that's quite a common thing to do in order to be able to view it on a 3D TV. Um, I skipped one here, so you've got your side-by-side the side by side re with reduced size that just allows you to do the same thing as the one above but just with a reduced size and um, then it also has this upload to YouTube this is that is actually the same thing that we've had a look at previously with a button that doesn't work so that will actually not work okay so I'm back here on the um, standard navigation of the uh, images and videos uh, what I'll now do is select uh, two videos. So I'll select uh, this one and this one here. And what we'll do is join them together. So uh, you have to have both of them selected, otherwise the item will be grayed out. If I now go to my 3D template uh, tool palette, uh, it now allows me to stitch those together. All right, so I can swap them around. I can have one or the other go first. I can have some cross fade in there and I can also have some fade in or fade out, uh, whichever my preference is, or I can have no transition effect. I'm not gonna demonstrate that. That's fairly straightforward video editing, just showing you that this can be done. Um, the uh, other item that can be done is that you can make 3D movies. For this, I'm going to go to the edits that we've already done. So we have split our video, as you know, into left and right eye components. I'm now going to take those left and right eye components that we have uh, created, this one and this one here, and I'm going to stitch them back together to make a 3D movie. So this is essentially the reverse of the splitting that we've done before. And if I now go here, you can see that I've got those two selected. I can start that process and it will take those two videos and stitch them together in order to make a stereoscopic video. Now, <laughs> it was kind of pointless taking them apart and putting them together again. But the point of this exercise is to show you that if you had your own independent videos for left eye and right eye, you can use the software to join them together to make a, a 3D video. Okay, those are all of the uh, tools that are available to you from a, a video perspective. Uh, the tools that are available to you from a imaging perspective, and I'll go back to uh, my raw images here. Um, from a imaging perspective, there's only two tools available. 
One of them is to split out your left and right images from your MPO file, and the other one is to stitch them back together if you happen to have two JPEG files and you want to create an MPO file from that. So I'm not going to demonstrate that, that's really straightforward, but that's what these last two uh, functions are that you have here. The splitting of MP files and the making of MP files. And this here is a demonstration to you of the tool palette that is available to you. Okay, um, with that what I'm going to do now is to move across to some of the third-party software and give you a bit of a taste of uh, the ability to do much more detailed work uh, with those. So your FindPix Studio is a nice tool to do some quick and dirty work. Uh, some quick manipulation if you, if you want to, but if you want to do any more detailed work, uh, I would suggest moving across to some of these third-party tools. Okay, so let's start up Stereo Photo Maker and see what we can do with our image that we've taken with our Fujifilm camera. I'm going to take the one that we had problems with, so the one that wasn't properly aligned, the one that we took separate photos, so that's this one here. And I'm going to see whether we can correct that. So I'm just going to look that, at that uh, as an anaglyph, as we have before, and uh, similar result. If you look at that with red and blue glasses, it, it doesn't look right. Now, in here you do have a, a function where you can do your alignment uh, if you haven't done the alignment correctly when you when you took the photo. And uh, that's this easy adjustment. I'm just going to press that button here. And it now allows me to move that back and forwards and uh, up and down until I've got it nicely aligned. All right. If there's any scaling required, I can do scaling, I can do rotation. Uh, I can even do more advanced things like correction of barrel distortion or uh, vertical and horizontal perspective corrections. Um, so quite some advanced features that are available in here. But I'm not going to do that myself. There's actually a function in here that does all of that automatically for you. So you notice I didn't press OK, so we're back to this distorted image. And I'm going to press Auto Alignment. And here it's done that all automatically for me. And it tells me what it's done, right? So it has done some rotation. It has done some, it has done some resizing. And it has done some perspective um, adjustments, some position adjustments. All of that is summarized here. So you know exactly what it's done, but it's done that for you. And it's optimized that for you. And uh, I find that this application does that quite well. So when you do take your own left and right eye images, I would suggest that uh, you do use this application to, to make corrections to those because you never just quite get that perfect by doing the alignment uh, using the screen uh, in real time. Okay, so that's quite nice. There is other uh, functions and functionality in this uh, piece of software, in this uh, Stereo Photo Maker, that is quite nice. I'm not going to go through that. I might do a review of this software at some stage later. It is uh, very rich in functionality, um, but that's not the purpose here of this video. Um, what I'll do next is I will show you um, Stereo Movie Maker, which is a similar thing for movies. So this application that we're in now is for photos. I cannot bring my AV, AVI file in here and make adjustments to that. That won't work. So this is only for my MPO files. Okay. So um, we'll do the equivalent of what we've done for images. We'll now look at videos, and for that we will need Stereo Movie Maker, another free application uh, that I'll show you the download link for in the description. So we'll open up our video that we've created earlier, and you'll find that you'll get this error. Um, 
um, running Windows 10 and, and you're likely to come across this. Now I'll show you what you need to do to fix that. I'm just going to shut down Stereo Movie Maker as I make this update. Basically you're going to have to get that codec and um, video for Windows configuration uh, is what is needed. You need to download the FFD show video encoder for this. I'll also show you the link in the description for that. And you're going to have to scroll down to MJPEG and uh, select the um, LIB AV codec for that. And then of course apply it. And uh, now when we open up our Stereo Movie Maker, we should be able to open that file. Okay, there we go. So once you've done that, you don't have to do that again. The codec is now in the system and you should be able to open up any of the files from the uh, Fujifilm camera. Uh, it comes up with the left and the right eye image and the comp composition of those two. Um, you can view that like that. You can view it just straight as an anaglyph. And uh, that's probably what we want to do. You can zoom in and zoom out with the scroll wheel of your mouse. And you can uh, start playing uh, the video. Okay. So just like you could before with the um, FinePix Studio. But there's additional things that you can do here as well. Similar to the um, setup that you had in Stereo Photo Maker, you also have those sort of adjustments that you can make here. So you can um, make position adjustments, you can make rotation adjustments, size adjustments, perspective adjustments, all of those things that we were familiar with with Stereo Photo Maker, you can, you can do in here as well. Um, not that generally you would have to, um, uh, because there is not the same left eye, right eye separate image taking as there is for, for still images. For video, that functionality is not provided in your Fujifilm camera. Um, so you would generally only have your uh, stereo video, which is already aligned because it was taken with the two lenses that are in the camera. But should you for any reason have two videos that you want to align, uh, you can do all of that in here. But there's other things you can do in here as well, of course, and there's lots of features similar to Photo Stereo Maker that I'm not going to go through individually, and I might do a review on this application later as well. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, taken the photos uh, and we have processed them. But ultimately what you want to do is also share them. Now there's good news and bad news with that. I'll start with the bad news. The uh, methods that Fujifilm have provided in order to share your videos and uh, images mostly don't work anymore. Um, the good news is that there are workarounds for some of those. So I'll just quickly share with you what some of those are and uh, what you can do to still view and share your images and videos with others. I'll start with printing. So one of the ways that Fujifilm provided a way of sharing your images was to print them in 3D so that you can view them without glasses on a lenticular print. And I've got examples of that. So I've taken advantage of that service uh, and um, printed a few at the time it was available. This service, by the way, is no longer available. Uh, and um, I've got some samples here of that and you obviously can't see these in 3D but um, uh, you may be surprised that I can't either because they're not really all that 3D and that surprised me somewhat um, because on the camera when I look at these very same images they are 3D. So I've taken one here uh, of, a, um, of some houses for real estate purposes um, here is one of Mount Everest, and um, here is one of Machu Picchu. Now the Machu Picchu one here is probably the one that's most stereoscopic, but it's only got that effect down here in the lower area, and other areas don't have that, even though when I look at that on the Fujifilm camera, 
all of that is in very nice crisp 3D. And looking at that closer, um, I suspect that what Fujifilm did was that it created 3D depth maps from my stereoscopic two views to create multiple views or attempted to create multiple views so that uh, with the lenticular print you would be able to view it from multiple angles. Albeit, I don't think that it uh, turned out, in my case anyway, all that successfully. So even at the time the service existed, um, the prints may not have been everything that um, I would have hoped that, that they would be. There are, however, services that, uh, that are available today by third parties that do print MPO images onto lenticular uh, film. Um, and I'll provide the link in the description below so that you can take advantage of those should you wish to do so. So that's one way of sharing your images. There is, uh, of course, uh, the digital way of uh, sharing images as well, which is what we want to do today. And um, uh, you want to be able to share on YouTube, on, on Facebook, uh, and other social media. And the best way I would suggest for sharing those is simply through uh, red and blue glasses, anaglyph formats, because they are the easiest way of uh, distributing uh, your 3D content. It does mean that your viewer is going to need to have um, blue and red glasses. They are easy to come by um, and the content is easy to share. You don't need to have any special um, hardware in order to view that. Although if your viewer does have special hardware like a Snap 3D or a, a light field display, then of course you can distribute it using those special formats and have them view it with that as well. Now just uh, getting back to the anaglyph way of viewing it, you do need to be careful that if you distribute it that the way that you distribute it retains the color information of the red and blue. Now as you would have seen in my very own content in the last uh, video, part one of this video, uh, I have attempted to upload anaglyph uh, straight into YouTube and it has changed the colors on me. So uh, you will see quite a lot of crosstalk as you're looking at the video and uh, images. That's somewhat unfortunate um, and uh, doesn't allow for good easy 3D viewing. Um, there are ways around that. Uh, I do intend to share them but it's beyond the scope of this review of the camera. That is more something to do specifically with, uh, with YouTube uh, or Facebook. So I'll be covering that uh, later. Uh, my intent is to cover that later. And again, check the description below uh, for updates on that. So I hope that you found this video useful on this camera. I hope you got something out of it. Um, I had the intention of showing how to use this camera if somebody does actually want to go ahead and, and use this camera. I think, like I mentioned, that it is still a camera that is useful today. My other intention was to have a reference point, a benchmark that we can use to compare other products that I'll be reviewing in other videos as we move forward. I hope I've achieved that objective. And thank you for watching. God bless.